Welcome to the Brunswick High Coaches Show with Head Coach Larry Harold Jr. Brought to you by Advanced Rehab, Pristine Water, Bruce Kennedy Tire, Sinorama, and by the Copper Pig. Now here is your host, Mr. Brunswick High, Kip Branch. Welcome to the Brunswick High Coaches Show with Head Coach Larry Harold on the Bishop Media Sports Network. I'm Kip Branch on location here at the Copper Pig where we are every Thursday night at 6 p.m. for every week this season. This segment of the Coach Larry Harold Show is sponsored by the Copper Pig, Advanced Rehab, Christine Water, Bruce Kennedy Tire, and by Sinorama. And now joining us, the head coach of the Brunswick High Pirates, Coach Larry Harrell. Welcome, Coach. Hey, Kip. How are you doing? Good to be here. Doing fine, Coach. We went on the road last week with South Effingham, the Guyton, and the Corral to play the South Effingham Mustangs. We come up on the short end of the score, 28-24, but a lot of good things happened in that football game. Give us a quick recap of what happened last Friday night. Uh, felt like our, our kids uh, focus and, and, and belief in each other uh, really picked up and intensified, uh, you know, South Effingham has been a program that struggled over the year, and they've really benefited of having a senior lady team. I counted the roster as about 23, 25 seniors. But uh, our kids went in there and battled. Uh, came out and, you know, got a quick three in, out start. It was kind of wet. They kicked the ball, punted the ball. We muffed the punt and gave them the ball to show yards and score. We started young, Alonzo Brown, sophomore, never played quarterback before. We had to go down engineer drive. Finish off the drive, uh, scoring with Randy Jordan. I feel like that was a positive thing. Uh, come back, I think a series or two later, and they're able to punch it in, but we're going to halftime, 14-7. And at that time, I really felt good about where we were. Um, you know, having a team like that still in the game, felt like, you know, if we didn't muck the punt, the game should have at least been 7-7. Seven seven. Come back out in the second half, uh, and they were able on 35 to run a, what we call a, 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 you know, pump fake play and hit us up deep and it's 21-7. At that time, I'm looking at the body language of my team and I'm trying to see how they're going to be. And just like we talked earlier, uh, really could have mailed it in, but uh, we came back out and engineered our own drive. 21-14, we go three and out again, get the ball back tied up, 21-21, five minutes left. And we are excited. Momentum has changed. And uh, we, we feel it good about ourselves. I mean, the defense are like coaches, we get the ball back. We kick the ball off, and the wind catches the ball. We have been kicking it. I think we kicked it out the end zone the, the, the time before we scored. This time, the ball gets caught up in the air, and the guy that we're trying to kick it away from catches it and takes it back to the four yard line, and they punch it in. Uh, they go up 28 21. We still engineer another drive, some holding penalties and other penalties, move it back, and then we're able to kick a field goal try an onside kick that was failed. And there you got to score 28-24. So uh, just a lot, you said a lot of positive things with the 14-yard field goal. I think it's one of the longest field goals Brunson's had, I think, in the last 10 years. Long time. Uh, look at the yeah. stats. She went over 250 yards rushing. Uh, ran in journey and put in what I call a youngest effort. He had 86 yards receiving. Turned around with 121 yards rushing. Shaq Robinson had 101 yards rushing on only 12 carries. Benjamin. McLeod had another 30, 40 yard rush. So our offensive line really came on big. Um, and I'd like to mention all those guys from uh, Deontay Demery, who's a junior, who will be back next year. Chad Matthews, our own senior. Ty Henson, um, our sophomore center. Um, John Kano, our sophomore right guard. And our big freshman, Warren McClendon Jr. They're doing a great job and the, the continuity and the confidence they're getting is really great going into this part of the year. This is the Brunswick High Coaches Show with Head Coach Larry Harold on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Coach, we're going to talk a little bit about that power running game like we would like to reference to. Two guys with 100 yards rushing last Friday night in Guyton. And again, you just praise your offensive line. Talk a little bit about these running backs and talk a little bit about Raymond Jernigan. He was injured last week, couldn't throw the football, but uh, he came to you and said, Coach, what can I do to help? And y'all found some point in the game plan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just like we talked about earlier, you know, I know people were frustrated with the way the game went against Statesboro, but 
you know, when you know that, okay, this kid can't throw, I thought our coaching staff did a real good job of designing a creative game plan and find a different way to get, you know, our explosive quarterback slash athlete the ball. Brandon Jernigan, you know, caught a kickoff. He has a kickoff return yards. Uh, he was back there for punts. We threw the ball to him. He ran the ball. I mean, he did it all. I mean, he's just that type of athlete. So we just figured we had to use the athleticism some type of way. And our coaches did a good job of developing the game plan and utilized. I thought the young Lonzo Brown was poised in the first half, really held it down, had some good throws, had some good runs. Um, you know, and just really pleased with the way Shaq Robinson has come on the last couple of weeks. I mean, that's his third straight game with 100 yard rushing. Uh, Benjamin McLeod is a great complimentary back to that. Um, and I also like to talk about Seth Newton battle, our tight end, our unsung tight end. Um, he might have maybe three or four catches on the year, but he blocks his heart out. He's on every special team we have. He's another unsung hero in our receivers from Kenneth Dallas, uh, DJ Whitfield, Quandre Mosley, uh, to, to the other receivers. They knew they weren't gonna get the ball that much, but they blocked their hearts out. And the only way you get those big runs that we had is by downfield block. I'm just really proud of my guys for the fight that they have and, and just the courage and integrity to keep fighting despite all odds and, and the, the, the abysmal season that we've been having. Coach, uh, I know we had a couple of breakdowns on special teams you highlighted earlier. We fumbled a month of punt, gave up the kickoff return, but there was a lot of positives. Me and uh, Teddy were commenting during the broadcast that uh, it's been a long time since we've seen a kickoff at Brunswick High go three yards deep in the end zone, and we had the 42-yard field goal, and Raymond Jernigan almost broke a kickoff, and Seth Lubenbauer had two punts inside the 15-yard line down, one on the four and one on the 12. So a lot of good things happened on special teams also last Friday. Yeah, I, I know some people who don't, didn't attend the game listen to you on the radio, or then they listen to our radio show the next week. And, you know, of course, we're on the short end of the stick as far as the scoreboard. But if you are a true Pirate fan and you didn't watch our progress, you know, on this bye week, I've had a chance to watch film. We've gotten better. Um, looking at the old Camden film, looking at McIntyre, look, we've improved so much. And I think it would be discouraging if, you know, we were losing by astronomical scores, uh, if we were, you know, not getting better soundly. But like you said, all of our special teams are getting better, but you have key breakdowns, uh, the wind caught the ball, um, just just some bad breaks we've been getting. But I think because of adversity, as a coach and as a coaching staff, we peel back layers and going into being better teachers. And when you're one in five, you, you really look hard at what you're doing. If you win a couple of games, you kind of, you know, will brush over that. But adversity makes you look at everything. I have to look at myself as a coach and, uh, you know, come out of my creative side and how to motivate these guys and how to come up with good play when you got injured quarterback, when you got so many injuries and how to motivate. And our defensive staff did a real good job. Uh, we're going to uh, take it. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, we can talk about it. You know, South they've had an explosive offense. You know, I think they were having 35 points a game and we held them under that. So we can talk about that, you know. Okay. So. More to come on the Coach Larry Harold Show on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Right now, these words from our sponsor. Best barbecue and smokehouse in Glen County? The Copper Pig. Located at 704 Mall Boulevard. Local meat and produce markets. Live gators for the kiddos to feed. Mechanical pig a $1.99 drink menu, and so much more. From barbecue to steak, you won't find it any better than at the Copper Pig. 912-289-9880. The Copper Pig is your proud home for the Larry Harrell Coaches Show all season long. Thursday nights at 6 p.m. and go Pirates! That back won't stop aching or that knee won't stop throbbing? Your answer is Advanced Rehabilitation and their staff of professionals locations in Brunswick and on St. Simons for your convenience. Go to the place that is trusted by student athletes all over the Golden Isles as well as professional athletes. Advanced Rehabilitation specializes in neuro and orthopedics and will have you back in the game in no time. Find a clinic near you, physicaltherapygeorgia.com. Bruce Kennedy Tire is your hometown destination for tires. Michelin, Goodyear, and all the brands you trust. But don't let the name fool you, Bruce Kennedy Tire, located at 2928 Norwich Street, does more than just tires. Brakes, alignments, repair work, 
and more than I can mention. Bruce Kennedy is locally owned and operated so you get the best service in Glen County. So give Bruce a call at 912-264-6578. Bruce Kennedy Tire, a name you can trust. Welcome back to the Brunswick Kai Coaches Show with Head Coach Larry Harold on the Bishop Media Sports Network. I'm Kip Branch on location at the Copper Pig. This segment brought to you by the Copper Pig. Advanced Rehab and by Bruce Kennedy Tire. Coach, we go in at halftime down 14 to 7. We come out, we get down 21 to 7. And like you said, the body language, you were looking for something on the sidelines. But these guys, they circled the wagons. We came back out. Uh, like you said, Raymond Jernigan had a, a great game. Offensive line was blocking. Running backs were running. Receivers were catching. We just battled back, got in that football game. Talk a little bit about that third quarter. Um, like I said, at 21-7, you're 1-4, which the announcer kept reminding everybody that we're feisty 1-4 team. But, uh, you know, again, these kids, I just love them to death. I mean, uh, you know, I, I told them, you know, you can say whatever you want to about me because I love my kids. Uh, we just had practice there. We got off the field. Here we are on the bye we one and five. All our kids are there, you know, flying around. I know people must think, you know, they're out of their mind, but we're out of their mind, and how we keep them motivated. I don't know, it's nothing but from, you know, the man above, God, who I serve, and, and keeping these kids motivated, and all, they're listening to what we're saying about how young we are, but we're getting better every week. You know, my first job here, um, I joined the staff uh, in Campbell High School in Cobb, and we ended up going one and nine. And those losses that we were getting were, you know, 28, 35, 42 point losses. One of the worst things I've ever had in, in my 14 years of coaching. These are different. Um, you look at the last three games. We lost the last three games by a combined, uh, I think I counted 15 points. And in the last two weeks, it's only been five points. So, you know, we're battling. We're right there. We're, we're one play away the last two weeks. You take the Statesboro game, the big run, and you take the kickoff. Two plays, a combined two plays. And I think, you know, we got two victories. So, you know, but... but like you say, guys like you who come to the game, you and Mr. Bishop, y'all see the improvement. You can see that, you know, the coaches are still working hard. We're still motivated. We're not just, you know, down in the dumps. We just continue to grind and continue to embrace the process of building up this program that we're on. Coach, I've been real impressed with how our running game's evolved over this year. We started out, didn't run the ball very well in Glen Academy, and it steadily improved to the tune of 250 yards against an undefeated South Effingham uh, last week. Talk a little bit, you see, you, you like to run the football, you like the power running game. Just talk a little bit about the running game in general and just talk about what that means to the psyche of a football team when you're, when you're able to run the football like we have been the last couple of weeks. Well, I, I've been saying it before, a name that everybody should remember is Ryan McKenzie. Uh, he came over with a main kind of young, energetic coach. And um, his development of these linemen is phenomenal. I mean, just the way they believe, um, you know, the way he got the coach that were on the former staff excited about how they're playing. Kids that they never thought would play, you know, are playing inspired and they're young and, and just the camaraderie. Um, and, and that's what you got to have is continuity and confidence on the offensive line. He does a great job. Um, and people now start to see our vision when we talked about. When I looked at how talented Randy Jernigan is, his, and you know, you have Alonzo Riley to run. Well, if, if the running backs are, are doing what they're supposed to do, the zone all three only works is once you start getting gashed by the running back, and now those extra defenders have to pick through the running back, now the quarterback has a chance to pull the ball and run just like Randy did. Randy had three touchdowns last week because they got so enamored with Shaq Robinson and then McLeod ripping them that they forgot about how fast he was. He was able to, you know, rip him for three scores. So, you know, just pleased with how we're progressing. Um, once his elbow gets back, if we can add that passing game to it. You know, right now we're averaging, I think, 180 yards rushing a game. And I think we're right at, you know, 280 on the year uh, per game, which we want to be. We want to be a 300-yard offense. Um, you know, and I'm just pleased with my guys. And the thing that the kids said is, when they saw the 250 rushing, they're like, come, we, we passed our goal. Our goal was 200 plus yards rushing. And it just gets them excited when you give them numbers and they reach their goals. 
You're listening to the Larry Harold Show on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Coaches, switch around to the other side of the football. Our defense, the last two weeks, have, we've had a, a dramatic improvement on the defensive side of the football. Started with the Statesboro game where we heard a lot of flack. I call it just flack. I don't have a better term to use after the, uh, the game before the Statesboro game where we gave up 30 points. You admitted folks were there. We didn't tackle well at Effingham. When we come out against Statesboro, shut them down. And then outside of the short fields that we give South Effingham with the with the, um, with the fumble and the, and the kickoff return, we pretty much held our own on defense last week. And for stretches, long stretches of that game, we dominated a football game. Yeah. I, and I don't know if, if you know, if you didn't go to Effingham County or the South Effingham game, you don't see the type of kids that they've developed over these three years. Those are some big, thick kids. We're out there, you know, 14, 15 year old kids battling against 17, 18 year old kids. And you can tell the difference. They had one young man at the number 28. I won't forget him after some Effingham. I mean, he played linebacker, he played running back. You know, he played on every special team, and you would tell that he's bought into the system because his body looked a certain way and he played with such a tenacity. But again, that was explosive offense and other than the two punts. You know, our defense, you know, contained the running game, we tackled much better, and, you know, I was just really pleased about how they performed. I mean, after the Everham County game, the coaches, you know, Coach Mockett and Coach uh, Williams, rallied the rest of the staff and put back the fundamentals and techniques and focused on tackling and being aggressive. And we've done that and it's converted. And you know, everything that we do is correctable. It's correctable and we've been correct. And I'm just, I'm proud of my coaches. I'm proud of my, my, my kids. Coach, we called Reggie Jackson's name a lot on the radio last week. And it looked like for big parts of that game that he couldn't be blocked one-on-one. -on -one and from a broadcasting point of view, he looked like he had his best game of the year last week. Can you comment on his play? Yeah, but Reggie was, uh, got some playing time last year. We spent the big things out of him this year. Uh, but, you know, he was a little out of shape. So, you know, once Mike went down, he had to step back up and he just continued to work and work and work. He's, he's only a junior and he's, he's back in shape. And now you can see that he's in shape. He's explosive. Uh, Coach Johnny Butts, our defense line coach, has been working with him on hand placement, defeating blocks, um, and, and he's using his techniques. Um, another guy that's bought in is Jeremy Smalls. You know, we moved in from defense end because he's a bigger body to inside. He, those are two bangers now because of injuries. We had to move in inside. Uh, you know, Dwayne Austell is doing a good job of coming on as a young man. And, of course, Tony Hayward. So those are our front guys. And other than Jeremy Small, all of them are coming back this year. And just excited about, you know, they're getting taught so that they'll know what to expect from Coach Butts and the rest of the people's staff next year. Next year. We'll be right back on the Brunswick High Coaches Show with head coach Larry Harold on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Your go-to for your business's sign, Signorama, located at 5701 Altama, has everything you need. Flyers, business cards, banners, wraps, decals, lettering, displays, and so much more. 912-265-6463 or online at www.signorama.com. Locally owned and operated, Signorama is a proud supporter of Lynn County Athletics. And let's go Pirates! Pristine Water is your destination for pools, spas, and pool supplies. From installation to maintenance, Pristine Water is your best choice in all of Southeast Georgia for your next pool or spa. Give Pristine Water a call at 912-264-9233 for a free estimate or stop on in at 166 Key Circle Drive or check Pristine Water out online at pristinewaterandpools.com and go Pirates! Welcome back to the Brunswick High Coaches Show with head coach Larry Harold on the Bishop Media Sports Network and Kip Branch on location at the Copper Pig. This segment is brought to you by Pristine Water and Sinorama. Coach Linebackers made a lot of tackles Friday night. Uh, defensive backs played well. We, just, we had one blown coverage, but other than that, we tackled well, broke on the ball well. They didn't get much outside that one play in the passing game. Just talk a little bit about your back seven. 
uh, Cam Punch is yeah. turned to a fine young man. We just talked about him at the break. Yeah. Uh, Cam is was 230 when I met him. He's cut down to about 210, 205. It looks great. Um, he calls all the defense. He's Coach Lockett's uh, quarterback on the defense. Real smart, cerebral kid. Um, we had John Grant going there as a senior. Um, Tony um, Hayward again, the outside back, Sherrod Frazier. Um, Quan Chapman, uh, Donovan Oglesby, Santana Clark. And of course, we got uh, Denaji Gammons and Skylar Baggs. Um, I, fig I figured they're some of the best secondary um, that nobody's ever heard of. But, you know, they just make things so difficult because of their length, and it's really starting to come together. Um, and, and like I said, I'm just excited. People are probably like, well, how are you so positive, Coach? I mean, as a leader, I've grown so much this season with a short amount of time and being able to face, you know, adversity and continue to be positive. And a lot of times these kids pick me up, you know, they with their attitudes and their want-tos and, you know, Coach, we love you. And, you know, and, and just real, real, real great. And I told those seniors this week that I appreciate them because none of them have, you know, nailed it in on us. They continue to come to work every day, continue to be positive. And I told them they were going to be the centerpiece of this foundation that we're building going forward. Because I told quite a few people over the last week that last Friday night, I don't know if I've been prouder to be a pirate than I was Friday night. And I say that, I qualified it by saying this. We were down. We rallied. I hadn't seen that we didn't bring a huge crowd with us to Effingham, but our crowd was electric, our pet band was electric. You could feel it on the sidelines, our kids were electric, and you could just feel it. We had it in the broadcast booth, and we just, it's just a good feeling up there last Friday night where we came pretty close to beating a good football team. Probably should have beat them, but you know, you got, you gotta have adversity sometimes. Sometimes adversity builds character, and I know that's a cliche in sports, and you hear that a lot in life, but it's true, and scripture backs that up. Yeah, very true, um, and, and again, it, it's, it's helped us as coaches to redefine ourselves. It helped me redefine myself. There's some things that I've had to tweak and do things differently. Um, you know, it, it's made us all better. Um, to be able to sit up here, I never thought I'd, first of all, after the hard work that we did in the spring and the summer, that we'd be sitting here at 1 and 5. Um, but the fact that we are, and we're still pushing and going forward, it, 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 it's, it's great. And if we can be this positive, you know, with what we're facing, you know, when the good times come, it's really going to be good. Like you said, the band did a great job. You know, the band that came did a great set in the soaking rain. You, know, you do a great job on the radio. Mr. Frank and those children do an excellent job. We hear them, and that stuff picks our boys up. And, you know, those few, faithful few are going to change back into the Pirate Nation again. I truly hardly believe it. And we're just going to keep working until we put the, the, the great product that, that everybody in Brunswick wants on the field. This is the Coach Larry Harold Show on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Coach, we got a bye week this week. And then the Coffee County Trojans come to town uh, on the uh, next Friday night, the Glen County Stadium. They're a good football team, but we played very well historically against Coffee, and we've beaten them the last two times they've come to Glen County Stadium. Just talk a little bit about Coffee and what they bring. I know they look like an NFL team in uniform, and they've got some athletes, and they always have, but historically we just match up well with those guys. Yeah. Um got a chance to you know check them out earlier this year and I was amazed by their size and one thing about this region and being five it doesn't get any easier you know lick your wounds because nobody gonna feel sorry for you you know the next powerhouse team is coming in um, and, and like I say it sharpens you as a coach that's why I chose you know to, to take this job because I want to challenge myself I want to challenge my coaches and my ability and I'm getting a chance to do that against another great team um, coffee like you said is big physical, um, they have a big running back back there, Mr. Davis, uh, have a good quarterback that commands everything, they have some monsters up front on the D-line, so we'll have our work cut out for us, but, you know, I'm going to tell you now, our kids are not going to lay down, I don't know, you know, what people expect to see next Friday night, Glenn, you know, you're going to see one of the hardest fighting, you know, 
pesky, if you want to call it that, one in five teams in the state of Georgia. And we're going to give it our all. You know, we're going to come up with some great strategies on the coaching side of the ball. And we're going to let it all, let the chips fall where they may. Coach, we got about three minutes, two and a half minutes left in the show. Talk a little bit about that offensive set we came out in last Friday night at South Effingham. Just and talk a little bit about that, and then we'll ask one more question about that, how that ball game ended. But talk a little bit about that set. You had to you call South Effingham and burn a timeout to try to adjust to it on the fly. If I could tell you the history of that set, yeah. uh, we were playing Peach County when I was at my last job. Peach County had come up the year before from the state championship. My first year to beat is 49-0. And we were going in there, and this is our second year, and we were two and you know, we were undefeated. And uh, we just felt like we had a freshman quarterback, and we needed something explosive to keep our offense going. We didn't want to get out there just throwing the ball around. Because anybody knows the history of Peach County, they play defense. Oh, yeah. And so I'm sitting at home on a Wednesday night, and I'm watching this coaching show, and my favorite coach, Chip Kelly, is on, and he shows his set. And I ran to the coaches, and I said, man, we're going to run this. And, you know, my offensive line coach, Coach Ryan McKenzie, was like, coach, we got a young quarterback. You know, the kids are positive, but we need something to get in the site. He said, coach, it's time to break that set out. And we did it, and it worked. I think it caught them by surprise. And, and, and that's what I say, confidence and momentum is everything. Once we drove down the to score on that first drive out of that set. The kids start believing, okay, we can play with these guys. Don't look at the record, don't look at our record. We can play with them. So it's our job as coaches to be creative. It was fun for the kids. And that's the little stuff as coaches that we have to do to keep them excited about the game this time of year. The set was you had the center and the two guards and you have both offensive tackles split out like wide receivers, but they were on the line of scrimmage, so they were technically linemen and you had our receivers lined up behind uh, behind it and it was great on the radio to call big six six three hundred and eight pound Deontay Jimmer to see him split out like a wide receiver. We got a kick out of that on the radio last Friday. Right, he got a kick out of it too. Him and Big Warren McClendon checking with the referee, making sure they have a lot of screw that's a sight to see, but you know, you just throwing out little wrinkles to give uh something that Sam Ed had never seen. Um you know, and I'm sure, you know, we'll break it out again somewhere way, way down the road. Um, just, you know, always trying to do creative, innovative things. That's something that teams will have to prepare for, you know, um, that we have. So, you know, again, it's, it's all about creativity. And it, when we showed it to the kids, they were ecstatic. And they were like, Coach, where do y'all come up with this stuff? So, you know, like I said, it, it's great to keep the kids guessing and keep them excited. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the ending of that football game. There's some controversy, and um, just talk a little bit about the explanation you got, and just talk a little bit about it, set it up. We were down 28-24. There's a couple of minutes left in the game. Uh, they took a delay of game penalty, and you take it from there. <laughs> well, we we uh, we saved our timeout. They had no more timeouts. We had two left. We used one on first down. We didn't want to burn it on second down. We didn't want to on third down. And I think they were waiting for us to use our last timeout. And then they have any left, and the clock rolls down to two. And I'm thinking if you recall the late game, the clock stops. So next thing I know, they're lining up running the play. And I'm, you know, on third down, like, you know, what's going on? I call my timeout, do converse with the head ref, and he admitted they made a mistake clockwise. And, uh, you know, again, I'm not a coach. You're never going to hear me get on the radio and start blaming the referees. It's our job as coaches. I told my players, we're not going to blame the referees. You know, it's our job. We should win that stadium and took care of our business. I let it be in the referee's hands. So, you know, it's one of the unfortunate things. Referees are human, too. Um, and, you know, they did apologize. But, you know, just, just a mishap um, that we would have been able to get the ball back should have been a penalty. But uh, we'll learn from it. And hopefully next time we get South Ever hand. You know, it'll be a different ball game. It's been a tough, rough, uh, rough couple of trips to Effingham this year. One game we didn't get our didn't get our hands shook, and then one game we had some a little bit of controversy at the end. So, um, if they stay in the region after the realignment, they all come back here next year. So, uh, we'll see if we can uh, return the favor on the school board and not the controversy surrounding those games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, like I said, we, we, we duly note 
you know, this season. And, uh, you know, that'll be our motivation off season um, because, you know, like I said, our kids want to win and, and, and they, are, they will never forget this season and the struggles and the trials we've been going through. Coach, we're proud of you. We're proud of the job you're doing. We're glad to have your family in town and good luck against Coffee County. Thank you, Pirate Nation. Uh, we needed this much needed bye week to heal up some guys. And uh, next week, we're going to be recharged and energized. And, um, you know, everybody have a great weekend. As I always say, go Pirates. Thank you for joining us for the Brunswick High Coaches Show with Head Coach Larry Harrell on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Come out next week to the Copper Pig and join us at 6 p.m. for the Coach Larry Harrell Show. We won't have a show next week, but we'll be back after the bye week. So I'm Kip Branch. For Coach Larry Harold signing off, and like Coach said, go Pirates.